In the meanwhile, Tagore had to go through the most tormented decade of his life. In 1902, when he was only 41, he had to bid farewell to his wife and companion, Mrinalini. This blow came at the moment when, after a short but fruitful stay at Shilaidaho, he had shifted his family to Shantiniketan, struggling to establish his dream school in those arid terrains of Bolpur. Mrinalini was not only a mother of her five children, but she turned out to be the mother figure for all the boarders of the school. Tagore, by this time, had learned to accept his loss with admirable stoicism. But his elegiac poems of Sharon are a testimony of the pain that the poet had to subsume in the process. As a widower, the poet was left to raise his five children all alone. Around this period, the poet activist's public life too was troubled by the acute fund crisis to support his school in Shantaniketan. He was also preoccupied with the direct involvement in the anti-partition movement of Bengal. His father Debindranath's death in 1905, at a mature age, did not affect the poet as much as the passing away of his two children, Renuka and Shomindranath, in 1903 and 1907. The poet kept a sleepless vigil at Renuka's deathbed, where, for the last time, she heard him chant Om Pita Nahusi, the mantra she had learned from her father. Namaste Stu Mama Himsi This chant became an integral part of the daily prayer at Shantiniketan. Was this how the poet intended to transform his personal grief into a joyful celebration of life? <laughs> 